Hi guys, it's Wayne from Wayne Goodman Photography. So today, thanks to Camera Jungle, I've got the 70 to 400 millimeter lens from Sony. Um, this is a ZA mount lens. Um, so to make it work on the A7R2, which I have here, I'm actually using an adapter. It's a Sony adapter. Uh, it costs about 130 British pounds at the moment. And it's an LA EA3. Um, there is also an EA4 version, which is much more expensive and it's only required on cer in certain circumstances on the a7r2 which you'll see in a forthcoming review as well um, but also on other cameras such as the a7r and the a7s i think as well in some cases um, to give phase detection and various things it, it sort of boosts the performance of some lenses and allows some others to work on this newer body um, the lens itself is the version 1. You can tell that um, by the, the finish. It's like a very matte, sort of grey, silvery sort of finish. Um, the newer version, the current one, the version 2, is actually a white finish to it. So that's how you can differentiate them. And um, they haven't changed too much between them. They've made the autofocus in faster. Um, so obviously I'm interested to see how slow is this one, if it's slow and apparently it's four times faster than the new version so that's a big jump so that gives a lot of leeway and maybe a lot to be desired in this model um, and the other thing that they've done as well is they've changed the coatings on the lenses as well within uh, sorry the elements within the lens um, to reduce ghosting flares that type of thing um, so again it will be interesting to see how this performs with sort of chromatic aberration and, and just general image quality um, so we'll give it some autofocus tests, uh, do some image tests as well uh, to see the image quality that lens can produce with the a7r2 and just see generally how 100, uh, 70 to 400 millimeters you know combines with something like the a7r2 is it an absolute powerhouse? Is it a professional lens? Um, or is it just great fun and something that, you know, if you don't use telephoto a lot, should you just have it in your bag? Okay, so we're in Lightroom. I've just brought up some images from today, just a few uh, which I selected, which will be good as test shots. That's all they are. They're not represented my photography whatsoever, hopefully. Um, basically, I just wanted to show you sort of various things. So we've got the background blur in this image, um, very pleasing to me. Uh, it's an f4 lens, so you're never going to get that super creamy sort of bokeh that you see on maybe like an f2.8. Um, but you know, overall, uh, very pleasing to the eye. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. It's not too jiggly or wiggly or nervous or however you want to describe it. It's actually um, you know pretty soft, really. Um, good separation from the foreground. Uh, I focused around about here somewhere, yep, and you can see really nice sharpness there. And what's even nicer to see, remember this is at f4, so it's the widest uh, the lens does, and also at its widest focal length. And if we head down here, um, again, very sharp, so really nice corners. Um, you know, nothing wrong with that at all. That whole image, you know, it's, uh, it's sharp throughout, and it's got nice background blur, you know. So I think this is leading to why maybe Sony didn't really update the optics for the second version of this lens um, you know because maybe they didn't particularly need to too much um, heading into here so another one just showing the background so this uh, this barbed wire was actually only probably uh, about a meter behind this bush and you can see um, you know you can see how out of focus it is already so uh, that's at f4 at 70 again so if we just come into here and again, nice and sharp. Now this bush was actually moving, so um, I must have just caught it at the point where it wasn't moving. So I have got a nice sharp detail there. Um, you know, good separation from the background where you, you know, you can particularly just tell what it is, but uh, you know, not not totally blur it out. Um, if you really wanted to totally blur it out, you're going to need a wider lens than f4, unfortunately, but. For the most part, uh, I think this is really good performance for this lens. I, I didn't expect this at all. Um, heading to here now. Obviously, this is not the best image you'll ever see again. Remember, these are just test shots. But what this would normally do is show if there's any chromatic aberration around the leaves here. So if we head to here, just see how it's performing, and it does actually seem to be pretty a pretty good performance. To be honest, we're not really seeing too much fringing at all around the edges of the leaves. Um, I mean, if you start to bring editing into the process, if we 
drop those highlights right down then maybe we'll see something bring that just stupidly up um, no again pretty good really um, that, that's not bad at all that's really really decent so uh, I always tend to leave my images for review here uh, and see them with you for the first time pretty much I'll have a quick glance through them but you know I won't particularly do anything so I'm seeing them as you're seeing them and for me personally I think that's really really good there's nothing wrong with that remember this is the version 1 lens which apparently doesn't have too many coatings on it and um, so it's doing pretty well uh, let's head into here so uh, this is at 400 millimeters now and I tried a few different uh, speeds just to see what we could drop it down to on the a7r2 using the the ibis the in-body stabilization um, so this is at one four hundredth of a second at 400 millimeters you would therefore expect a, a sharp shot and we get that um, no problem there really at all if we head to the next one i did this down at 1 60th which i would expect is fine as well and yep that seems okay to me no issues there so just wait for that to all yeah remember this is um quite a wide aperture so you'll you'll tend to see some blur creep in as well um right uh one eightieth of a second let's see how it performs so this is still at 400 millimeters the rules of photography basically say we should be at 400th of a second to get a sharp shot here so can it do 180th and I think that answers your question and says yes I don't see any blurring there whatsoever um, these are all handheld um, I've not used a tripod for any of these shots I purposely just took the lens out went into not a particularly bright afternoon and um, you know just sort of saw how it would be handheld and how it could cope next one we're at 1 40th of a second so this is now a tenth of what it should be in terms of shutter speed and I don't think it's perfect but it's surprisingly good I mean actually that that does look pretty sharp in some points so um, yeah I think you'd get away with that 1 40th of a second on a 400 millimeter lens thanks to the in-body stabilization of the of the a7r2 that's pretty pretty impressive to be honest um, I think I did another one yeah 1 20th of a second this one I can't see this being sharp so if we head back into this point yeah it's uh, now we're starting to see where it's got motion blur and um, because the stabilization just couldn't stabilize it quite enough to stop that um, so yeah 140th though I'm sure if I really held my breath and everything maybe I would get down to 120th but even 140th you know is pretty good going I'm quite impressed with that definitely impressed with that um, and so the next then oh yeah sorry one tenth uh, we can see that ain't happening so <laughs> yeah that's pretty bad um, but you know still one tenth on a 400 millimeter it was never going to be any good head to here this was just a helicopter that flew above and I just wanted to test how close you can get 400 millimeters this helicopter was like a dot in my actual field of view and I was surprised that we could get in this close um, perhaps if we go in even more yet yeah. so you can actually see some detail you can see the light there on the end of it you can see design of the helicopter and, and uh, unfortunately I think that's actually the air ambulance um, so you can see I think the air ambulance uh, signal there um, that's a charity I always donate to if I can and I always recommend you do by the way um, because you never know when we'll need things like that hopefully we don't but it's always good to um, so yeah 400 millimeters uh, zooming in on helicopters you'll be absolutely fine but this was so far away I'm sure if you were at an air show and you had really decent um, you know close range distance to all the vehicles or the aircraft um, you would be absolutely loving this lens um, maybe the autofocus would struggle a bit sometimes but I think actually it would do a pretty decent job um, this was quite um, interesting I spotted these mushrooms and I was actually surprised how close I could get in with the with the lens just to zoom back out a bit now don't forget we've got some noise here it was at ISO 6400 so this is never gonna look perfect if I would have had a tripod I could have done this at ISO 100 and got a really incredible shot I'm sure um, but forgetting the noise we've got lots of sharpness going on here lots of detail um, and I'm really impressed I mean this uh, this mushroom patch was probably about 
I'd say it was it was maybe about a meter and a half to a meter to a meter and a half away from me, um, and I I honestly felt like I was using a macro lens at one point because I could zoom into it that much. Um, I was really quite impressed with that, and of, of course you know with the A7R if we crop in, and uh, we just want it a little bit, um, I'm sure it will manage that absolutely fine. Nothing wrong with that at all. So. Um, you know it's surprisingly usable maybe not as a perfect macro lens it's not a macro lens but if you didn't have your macro lens with you one day and um, you know and you only had this it would actually do a surprisingly good job I reckon so you know very impressed with that um, head into the next one and again just let this render there we go so um, we can zoom in on that and really you know again very good detail very pleased with that there's nothing uh, nothing wrong with that at all um, you can see all the fibers of the mushroom and you know just really really interesting you know just like macro photography is always a, an incredible thing to try out um, this gives you that sort of macro feeling to it but uh, it was just another uh, use for this lens which I wasn't expecting uh, a leaf always a good one right uh, we'll just wait for it to render so this was at 1 80th of a second um, I'm not sure where I focused I think it ended up is that I was focusing on the leaf but it does seem to have focused more on the sort of the greenery around it so like I say this is this is where I was telling you you need to tell this lens where to focus because there's not much um, there's not much wiggle room, I'd say, in the fact that if you just get it even slightly off, you're going to end up with a blurry image uh, because you're not going to have the focus on where it should be. Um, you can see there, you know, there's not much room between out of focus and in focus. Okay, this was uh, a zoom test just to show you how much you can zoom in. So that's at 70 millimeters. The next one is at 200 millimeters. Um, so we've gone we're going in on this here and if we go back to down to 400 millimeters that's what you get so to the point where we can actually read everything on that sign and you know so this is the power of 42 megapixels and the 400 millimeter lens it's a pretty great combination to be honest for detail and things like that um, totally underexposed this shot because I didn't have my settings correct at all but I just thought it was quite interesting that um, this again is another zoom test 70 millimeters down to 200 millimeters and then to 400 millimeters I'll just brighten that up a bit that's terrible and this was just like a, some kind of spider's web and look at the, the details really really impressed with that um, you know you've got all the unfortunately dead flies um, but how cool is that for 400 millimeter lens that's supposed to be a telephoto um, it's doing in my opinion a very very good job now onto this one uh, this is a wide shot 70 millimeters of some scenery um, we'll head to 200 millimeters so we've, we're mainly concentrating on this area here around the hill okay and then now we're going to zoom in on here and this is with the the focal length of the lens I'm not using a crop or anything um, down to there so that's 400 millimeters and if we now zoom in digitally look how much detail is on that I'm actually quite surprised you can even see the tiny well it's probably not tiny but a little um, sticky uppy thing um, which you wouldn't have a chance of seeing normally so <laughs> this lens honestly for what it's supposed to be um, alright so it's an expensive lens it should perform well but it's not a professional lens I don't think um, you know it's not quick enough to be a professional lens it could be used under professional pretenses uh, but it's not aimed at the professional market it's not one of these six thousand pound crazy lenses it's a prosumer high-end lens and for it to be getting detail like this on the a7r2 which is a very high megapixel sensor I'm nothing but impressed um, so that's the uh, that's the images that I taught the test images I hope that gives you some idea of how it performs 
and now we'll go on to the autofocus tests. Okay, so this is the focus test. I'm going to bring the lens to it's at 70 millimeters at the moment. I'm going to bring it to its closest focusing manually, and I'm focused on an object around about two meters away to three meters. And we're going to hit the shutter button three, two, one. Okay, so that's from the closest, and then I'm going to switch that right over to infinity. And three, two, one. So a little bit of hunting, um, but this is the general performance that I was noticing when I was out and about with the, the lens as well. Um, I'll bump that up to my usual sort of 135 range um, and we'll give that a closest focus, 3, 2, 1. And furthest infinity focus, 3, 2, 1. Okay, go to 200 millimeters. And closest again, three, two, one, and furthest, three, two, one, and now we'll go all the way to 400 millimeters, bring it to the closest, three, two, one, a bit more hunting that time, I think, and furthest, three, two, one. So much slower on that final attempt at 400. This is all in a, a room lit with just natural lighting. Uh, sorry, not natural lighting, uh, you know, actual fluorescent lighting, just normal halogen type bulbs, uh, that type of thing going on. So it's, uh, it's currently dark outside, but there's plenty of light in here. Um, and I've also got one of my new lights, which I'm using for the videos, uh, lighting up the screen. So if I do that, you can see the difference and uh, so plenty of lighting really it should be fine um, it's showing as fine on the screen so uh, that gives you a really good idea of how the performance of this, of this lens is and now we'll move on to the conclusion okay so you've seen the autofocus test you've seen the image quality test and I'm sure you've been able to make up your own mind but I just wanted to give you some of my thoughts from using the lens throughout the day um, firstly, firstly, I would say it is quite heavy and quite bulky. It's not massive for its range though. Um, in fact, really, it's not massive at all. You know, it's what you would expect. So um, it's going to be a big lens with this zoom range, you know, unless you're talking sort of micro four thirds. Remember, this is a full frame system, so the lenses are always going to be quite big. Um, the, the overall heft is not terrible, but if you are going to use this sort of for a day's shooting, uh, I would definitely recommend some kind of sling, you know, uh, camera strap like a Black Rapid, something like that, where it spreads the weight out and it's not going to drag your neck down, you know, because it's so heavy. Uh, so definitely something else to take into account, an extra expense that you're going to have to incur when you buy something like this, um, because my little Leica lens, uh, Leica strap here from 30 or 40 years old, you know, it's not, I'm not saying it's feeling like it's going to snap, but it's certainly pushing the boundaries of what this strap feels like it would take properly. And I'm sure with enough use, it would create a lot more wear and tear on a strap like this. Um, so that's the first thing, obviously, is the size of it. Um, now, autofocus um, is, to me, not that bad, um, but I've not been able to test it in the environment where I would personally use it, which would be sort of like something like a, maybe a car racing event, that type of thing, um, you know, because there's currently no car races on around me to actually go and really try this out, unfortunately. But I would imagine that it wouldn't be a great success rate. It'd be, I'd get the odd shot, but would I nail that shot that I really want from the day? Well, I don't know because it is relatively slow, but the main slowness comes from front to back. So if you, focus on something really close and then something really far away, that's where it takes quite a while to lock on. It's, you know, it's quite slow, quite sluggish. Um, if you're taking pictures of the car, say coming around the corner at the same point or your child at football at the same point each time, it's gonna be there or thereabouts. And that is one way to negate the fact that it's quite slow at autofocusing. But if autofocus is a thing for you, then there's no doubt about it, I would recommend the second version without even seeing it. 
um, because if it really is four times faster, that's you know a lot faster. Really is that's huge, um, and that would probably really make this lens. To be honest with you, um, it's one of those things that you 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 are thinking, well, oh, if only had the version two, um, but there's also a budget to take into account as well. The version two is anywhere up to double the price of the version one. That's a big amount of money extra, um, but it's also, you know, if, if you can afford it, great, and if you can't, I'm pretty sure you'd be able to make the version one work very, very well for you, depending on the type of photography that you're using it with. Um, another thing as well is obviously the version two has these extra coatings to the elements, but in all honesty, I mean, I'm, I'm perfectly happy with the results that I got from the version one lens. So I'm sure those uh, extra coatings help with various things, but on a day like today where it was overcast, I didn't really see too many problems, to be honest. Um, we looked at the chromatic aberration at one point uh, in the video, as you've seen, and I, I was amazed, to be honest, how well it controlled things like that. So, um, yeah, really good performance. I won't say it's a professional lens, um, not this version anyway, because it's not fast enough. Um, most pros tend to use sort of something down that's either a fixed aperture of say f4 or even 2.8. This is not a fixed aperture, so again we're going away from the professional series there, it's not aimed towards professionals. But if your 2.8 lens did break one day and you had to use this, I bet you'd be amazed at what you got out of it. Um, you know, it's a great lens. Other great things include little features like you've got this door here on the removable lens hood. and if you've got a polarizer in there, you can just adjust it. Um, how cool is that? You know, why haven't other companies implemented things like that? You know, that's what I like to see. I like to see innovation sometimes, and it's sometimes that innovation with myself personally that will make me keep something, even if it's not the best, you know? But saying that, um, we zoomed in on that um, windmill at 400 millimeters from miles away, it must have been at least two or so miles in the distance, that windmill, and I couldn't believe the detail that the A7R2 was able to pull out of this lens. So, you know, for me, it's an absolutely brilliant combination. Yes, it's a heavy lens, but it's always going to be. Um, you know, it's very rare that you'll find a lightweight lens that's got so much range as well. I mean, 400 millimeters is fine, but if you crop that on, say, the A7R2, you're going to quite easily come away with a, an image of equivalent sort of 600 millimeters, um, you know, without noticing any image degradation whatsoever. So absolutely brilliant that you can do that. It's not stabilized. That's a shame. Um, but we have the image body stabilization with the A7R2, um, and it seems to really handle that very well. So at the end of the day, you know, do you need the image stabilization on a lens when we now have these bodies that are so well kitted out for things? Uh, such as this. So, you know, it's a brilliant lens in combination with the A7R2 and the EA3 adapter that I've got on here. I, I honestly, I'm really impressed with it. I think it's fantastic. I think if you are going to sports days and things like that, you know, you might not get every shot, but you've not invested masses and masses of money. You've got a really good lens, probably at a really good price second hand, and, um, you know, you, you're going to be really happy with it, I'm sure. So that's my conclusion. I would definitely, definitely have one of these in my kit bag, uh, 100%. I think it's probably one of the most fun zoom lenses I've used in a while. Um, the only thing is you've got to have a use for a zoom, and if not, then you've got to find one of these at a great price where you're willing to just have it in your bag and use it those just a few times a year and, uh, and really, you know, just have a play with it, have, have fun with it. So that's my conclusion. Um, keep commenting and keep subscribing to my channel. I have got more videos coming soon um, and I'm also going to look at adapters, things like that. So make sure you subscribe and give me a thumbs up if you like the video. Thanks and have a great day.